Harry. I don't I don't know that part. I mean, um, Hello, hello. Oh, good. I'm here. Sorry, I'm, I was on the other line real quick. Sorry. Oh, no, you're fine. I'm, I am testing my microphone. Okay. Okay. I had some that were supposed to do the morning and now they're coming to the lunch. Oh, okay. It's like, okay, you guys. <laughs> well, we'll see if anybody comes to the morning. If not, we'll we'll be done early and then we'll just do it at noon. Yeah, I had I had three this morning that's supposed to be on for this morning. So we'll see. Okay. So that's fine with me. Yeah, if uh if it so if it continues where like you never know you know what I mean like which yeah. one but um we'll try the zoom versus the in-person and then if it if one just seems to be more than the other we might just do one one Go yeah one yeah okay. but we'll we'll see what happens okay because the whole purpose of doing the two was so that some of the businesses, you know, that wanted morning um, based on retail committee feedback, um, they actually don't attend. <laughs> so it's like, um, I know. That was for you guys. <laughs> so we'll give everybody a few minutes. So uh, churches are able to be at full capacity now. What about you guys? Well, that would be an Ernie Chase question. Ernie. Hi, Sherry. What were you saying just now about what were you saying when I logged out? I couldn't hear the whole thing. Um, that a lot of the people that were scheduled for this morning are going to actually come to the, the lunch one. Yeah. And so the purpose of adding the morning one was for like the business owners, you know, based on feedback, Latrice Scott, and then they don't even come. I know. So if the morning continues to drop, um, we might go to uh, lunch only again. What yeah. do you think? Well, um, yeah, because right now you just have you just have the staff. I mean, if you want, I mean, if, if anybody else doesn't come on, then we're happy to get on the lunch one too. If nobody else comes right now. Yeah, and the lunch one's in person. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So. Um, We'll see if anybody else logs in. Oh. So I'm getting a, a text from Alyssa. Hang on one second. Okay, because okay. she was one of the ones for this morning. All right, so we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and do it for Alyssa, but I told her I said uh, if things don't get picked up as far as morning, we're gonna switch to noon. She's actually gonna have to show up in person. <laughs> oh, good. Even though I know her personality prefers to be behind the scenes. Okay. Right, and we were supposed to have some of the girls from Southwest Cheese jump on, so I don't know where they're at. 
Yeah, that's what I thought too. I couldn't remember if they had said Zoom or in person. Mm -hmm. Zoom, because they said the morning. So, and then I sent them all the worksheets, but I haven't heard back from, you know, so. Okay. Well, we'll, uh, we'll wait for Alyssa and then we'll get started on one of my favorite topics. But what I was asking, um, Ernie too, is, you know, churches are open to full capacity. Are you guys? Um, I don't, I mean, we, we've been having meetings and stuff here. So, and the museum's about open now. So. Okay, and then are you guys uh, renting out the, the conference, the top room yet? Um, we haven't yet, but... Um, well, no, I referred no. someone to you guys. Okay. okay. And uh, so um, I told them it's really nice, but I wasn't sure if you guys were renting it out yet, mm -hmm. and for them to give you a call. Okay. And great. I told them to ask for Nick. Okay, great. All right, so we're going to go ahead and uh, get started here, so... I'm gonna share my screen and you should have handouts. This is probably gonna be a, a, a very interactive um, training this morning, but um, I do have to get, get out of here a little bit early to help a client um, hire somebody. So we're gonna, we're gonna get to work. And I would normally give my joke, but I wanna get started right off the bat. Um, now, you should have your time management strategies uh, worksheet, and uh, we'll probably go back and forth here. Uh, some of what I teach you, it may make you a little bit nervous. I've had people uh, get a little bit nervous when I've talked to them about some of the strategies, but you know, I whatever I teach, I do it from experience. I don't like to teach stuff I don't do or I don't know, and uh, so the uh, I did parts of this training. It was like my very first Fast 45 downstairs in the museum, but I've tweaked it and I've also learned some things since then. But this training this morning is for those of you that you feel like you're being ruled by the urgent, or maybe you feel like you're being ruled uh, by other people's impositions and what they think you should be doing. Now, of course, if you're in an employment situation, sometimes, you know, obviously you need to do what you're being asked to do, but even there, there are strategies for you. So I want to get a plan that works for you. And if you don't have, if you don't have, oh, if you can mute yourself. I know, you know, we should actually, I'm trying to do this, the permit tickets and stuff, but we should do a couple of, um, projects to try to do that like we, like there's enough oh, of it hold on let me make sure I'm on. you're not there we go okay <laughs> let me get back to that <laughs> I was like um nope we're not muted whoever that is I thought okay. we were getting zoom bombed <laughs> <laughs> right Okay, so uh, we're going to get a plan that works for you. And if you do not have your worksheets, if you could go ahead and uh, put that in the chat and Kim will get those to you. So the first thing I want to go it through is several myths that uh, people believe and it actually hinders them from taking control of their time. And myth number one is that you need more time. And the truth is you actually don't. Uh, and it's just like, you know, when I talk to people about money and budgets, people think that they need more money. No, they actually need uh, to, um, I guess you would say, steward better the money they have. And it's the same thing with time. So when it comes to time management, you need a strategy that cuts through the clutter. And that bold statement right there where it says clutter comes from assigning everything the same importance. If you get that one thing uh, today, that will capture time for you. You'll literally create time because clutter is where everything you're asked to do, everything that you feel you have to do, you, you categorize it as being equally important. And I'm going to help you cut through the clutter with some of the strategies we're going to go through. But that one statement right there will help you tremendously. Not everything will have uh, equal importance. And so you do not need more time. You need a strategy to cut through the clutter. Myth number two is I'm really good at multitasking. 
And the truth is your brain does not, nor can it multitask. What happens is the brain literally switches between tasks and it's never able to truly focus on one topic, one task. And according to research, so this is, uh, you know, data. I don't want to give y'all stuff that's like, well, they say this or they say that. According to research, it actually takes you 23 minutes and 15 seconds to refocus back on a task that you've been uh, distracted from or taken away from. Now, you might instantly be thinking, well, that's just normal in the workplace. Again, I'm going to give you some strategies uh, to help you that have worked for some of my clients and also myself. And then get this, a 30 second distraction, whether it's a knock on your door to ask a question, whether it's looking at your Facebook or Twitter, whether it's checking your email real quick or answering a task, that 30 seconds, again, will take you almost 25 minutes to get refocused on the task at hand. So you're looking at a 25 minute time waste so experts are calculating the number of distractions that we have throughout the day, whether they're uh, coworkers, your employer, or your own self-interrupt when it comes to emails and Facebook, et cetera. Workers are at this point in time losing six hours a day to distraction. So what that means is for every 30 seconds, you're equaling 25 minutes and they're actually estimating it's even more. So for those of you that are the type of personality like I am, where you can maybe look at something and get in the focus a lot easier and quicker and get your stuff done, uh, you may feel fine. But the majority of people uh, with the personalities of I, S, and C, that is definitely a lot harder for you to do. But on top of it, it causes a tremendous amount of stress. And so when they um, um, polled workers, this was a creative group survey, when they polled workers, they said that uh, some viewed multitasking that it improves their productivity. Some said it uh, somewhat improves, others didn't think it had any impact at all. Only 15% said it somewhat hinders productivity and only 1% recognized that it greatly hinders productivity. So multitasking is a huge myth in the workplace and people think it thinks they think it helps them, but again, the brain is not wired to multitask. So here's the reality. Number one is productivity drops 40%. The other thing that's very interesting, and I just apologize beforehand for the men that are on this training, is that the IQ drops 10 to 15 points. It's 10 for women, but it's 15 for men. Now, based on the average IQ for men, a drop of 15 points puts them in the age range of an eight-year-old. I mean, that's incredible. So for women, it's just as severe. A 10-point drop of IQ is not helpful. And uh, so that's the reality. It does not help productivity. It actually makes us dumber, quite frankly. And then uh, a minimum. So even if you're good at getting your stuff done with interruptions because you have that type of personality, at a minimum, you're losing 2.3 hours a day. But again, they believe it's closer to six. And it's costing the U.S. economy uh, the last uh uh, number point was 650 billion with a B in wasted productivity. So really the phrase time is money is accurate. Time is money. And so if you can help your team and yourself, I mean, you're welcome. This will be recorded. If you want to show this to your staff, or if you want to take some of these points and begin to, you know, address the distractions and the text messaging and things like that, uh, do it because this is your stuff. Once I'm done, you take it and use it however you want. But you will make more money as a company if you can start addressing some of these things with your staff. The other thing that I'm sure some of you guys have already noticed is the constant switching is actually addictive. And here's why. 
every time you switch to a distraction, like an email or a text or whatever it is, and you complete what, and I call them tiny tasks, you complete that tiny task, it drops a dopamine dollop in your brain. And dopamine is what causes addictive behavior. And you need more and more and more and more. So what happens is you start self-interrupting. And this is where, you know, you're focused, you're doing your work. And then all of a sudden you feel this need to check your phone. You feel this need to check your email. Uh, that right there is what I call a self-interrupt. Your body's like, hey, I, I could use a, a dopamine uh, dose. And so it will literally interrupt your focus so that you go ahead and complete that tiny task. That's also why if we have to-do lists, a lot of times we'll tackle the easy stuff that we know we can get done real quick. Uh, because again, completing a tiny task drops that dopamine. And then we find ourselves putting off that big thing that's hanging over our head, causing us stress for days, uh, hours, days, weeks, and even years. So be aware of self-interrupt because that is a sign that you're actually addicted to the, the constant switching to get those tiny tasks done. Myth number three is I need to find balance. I'm just gonna blow anybody that thinks there's such a thing out of the water because there isn't. Uh, balance is an idealistic goal and people created it because they felt overwhelmed and that they could just find balance. You know, I'll be less stressed, I'll be happy. But again, balance doesn't exist. What creates happiness? And this is another important takeaway that I would write down in that section I give you for your notes on the right is what creates happiness is living in your priorities as a person and as a professional. Now, again, in the employment realm, uh, you know, your priorities may not always be the, the company's priorities, okay? So we understand that. But if you take the things I teach you today, what I believe you're gonna find is that you will have more time for some of the things that you want to bring to the workforce, to the workplace. But when it comes to your personal priorities, you'll find that you'll be able to live in those more. And of course, we have external circumstances and situations that can be roadblocks to those that we can uh, work through. But the main thing is, I want you to be able to live in your priorities as a person, as a professional, more times than not, okay? So barring a death in the family, a huge project that's thrown at you, whatever it is, you're always gonna have those types of things. But you should be able, the majority of the time, live your life by design. So step number one, and I live by this question, is you must ask yourself, what is the one thing I can do in my life that would number one, mean the most to you? And number two, that by doing it, everything else would be easier or unnecessary. And this is from the One Thing book by uh, Gary Keller. It's, I highly recommend reading it. It's an easy read, but that question changed my life. And I literally structure everything I do around this question. And it can be seasonal, you know, uh, for me, paying off debt, which will be paid off next month, uh, is my one thing that will make everything else easier and unnecessary. Well, now I'm going to need to switch gears, right? For you, it could be uh, personally. What's the one thing I can do in my personal life that would mean the most to me and make everything, including my work, easier or eliminate some of the things that I think are actually important right now that aren't. So that's the question you got to ask. This is where you're focusing in on what is it that you want to do that will make your life meaningful and everything else unnecessary or easier. And I'm going to walk you through that. We're going to help you with that question. So again, your one thing might be based on a goal you have in this season of life, or it might be an overarching goal, which I call your, uh, uh, your definite focus, your definite chief aim, 
or it can be a professional goal or task that you have to get done so that everything else becomes easier or unnecessary. And so once you have that one thing figured out, and I want you to be thinking about it a little bit, then things will start to fall in place. But also that one thing becomes your filter for all decisions and all activities until completed. So when I was developing my course material, my one thing was launching Genius Communication. So it became a filter for whether I decide to go out and have dinner with friends or whether I decide to even clean my house. So for five months, I hold up in my, in my house and I created this thing and launched it in January of 2018, I believe. Uh, might, might have been 17, actually. So uh, once I had it launched, then I changed that one thing. But it, it, when you get laser focused, what happens is you begin to notice your decision activities go through that goal and it makes life easier. But you have to believe that you can accomplish it or you never will. And so then priority and productivity comes into your life. So priority gives you clarity. Productivity is the byproduct or the result of designing your day with that one thing as the main focus. Okay, so I want to stop here. And if you want to unmute and ask any questions at this point, or if you know what your one thing is and you want to share it, I want to give you an opportunity before we continue on, because I, I want to make sure you understand this, because this is the most important part of what we're going to talk to today. So I'm just going to give you a couple seconds. If you have any questions, unmute yourself and ask or put them in the chat. Okay. All right. Step number two. So once you have your one thing, step number two, and I do this all the time, is a brain dump. And this is a list of all you need to do. Now, I go about it a few ways. Um, I have a couple uh, notebooks that I will write down ideas in that I know are for the future. They're things that I know I'm going to do, but I'm not in a position either professionally or personally to launch those. There's like, you know, stepping uh, steps that need to be fulfilled first. But then you also have those things that are like, you know, your everyday stuff, you know, um, household uh, chores, relationship obligations, uh, child sports practices or band practices. And then on top of that, you have your, of course, professional uh, things that you need to do. And so what I do is I just write it all down uh, in my planner. I'm old school. I like to do that. You can put it in your phone and notes or something like that. And then separate 20% of those items out and create a new list that have to be done. Okay, these are must to do's. And then what I want you to do, step number three is take the one task out of that 20% that gets you closer to your one thing and then you do it first. So what I'm talking about here is again, priority that provides you clarity and then productivity by designing your day around that one thing. It doesn't mean that you don't do the other items on that 20%. And it doesn't mean that you don't even tackle some of the items that were on your original brain dump list. But what it means is you do nothing until that one thing is done. So again, let's say you get to the office, you have a big project you're working on, that may be your one thing before you address any emails, any text messages, or visit with coworkers. Uh, another thing is you may have to show up to your workplace and answer emails and text messages first. So allocate that time for that, then tackle that one thing. So however it works for you, if you know you're going to be bugged by emails and text messages to where that in itself becomes a distraction and you can't focus on your one thing, then get that out of the way. But set a timer because I don't know about you guys, but it's amazing like in the evening when I'm looking through Facebook or Instagram, before I know it, a good 15 minutes has gone by. So set a timer, a lot, maybe 30 minutes at the most, 
to answering emails, phone calls, and text messages, and then tackle that one thing. There's no hard and fast rules except the one thing rule. And so get your one thing done first. Eat that frog. Don't procrastinate. And then after that, complete the other tasks that are on your list. And then the final step in the one thing strategy is time block 25 minutes to four hours for undevoted fo undivided focus. And so again, it takes 23 minutes and 15 seconds to get back in the groove, right? If you're distracted. So you want at least 25 minutes to focus on that task. And if that's all you can give, kudos to you. Because over time, there will be a snowball effect. As you time block, and some of you might be thinking, I can't time block. I've got employees. I've got, you know, I'm going to give you a strategy for that. But as you time block and give that undivided focus, you're going to find that over time, as you chip away, all of a sudden you're caught up or all of a sudden you're not overwhelmed. All of a sudden you're creating your goals and your dreams and the life that you want by design. You start finding time instead of looking for time, okay? So that's step number four. Now we're gonna get to work and in your uh, worksheets, you're gonna see some things that we're gonna go through. But the first thing is I'm gonna give you some elements. Now, of course, we've already talked about the one thing uh, that's gonna be our first step, which we'll get to, but the zero based time budget. I don't even remember where I came across this, but I thought it was a brilliant concept and it's the same concept that people use for financial budgeting, where you budget, number one, your time based on your one thing versus others' demands and the tyranny of the urgent. And so it's almost like you clean slate your calendar and then you add those things that to you are priorities. Uh, and then you eliminate those things that you thought were important, but you're finding they're actually not and they don't add to your one thing goal. Uh, time blocking, guys, it's not optional if you want to uh, create time for yourself. Uh, most will raise uh, the most objections to this one. Well, we're going to troubleshoot it in your worksheets. And then also we're going to uh, work on anything that comes up that you know will come up. You know, it's like I would love to shut my door and have 25 minutes to four hours to work on something. But I've got a staff that interrupts me on every single thing. Well, we're gonna talk about that as well in a few, in the, the worksheets. So let me get over to those. And I want you to just go through these and then we're gonna share some of the insights. So the first thing, what is your one thing? Well, let's do the zero base time budget exercise first. So you'll see here on your papers, number from one to nine, what's most important to you at this season in your life. So number one, put that next to whatever category is a priority for you. And then number two is for the next one. So go ahead and number these uh, categories of life, one to 10, with one being most important and 10 least important. So I'm going to give you a few moments to do that, and I'm going to get some feedback. Okay, so I want you to unmute yourself. I'm going to ask uh, you guys to interact with me. So um, if you're done, uh, Alyssa, Tabitha, especially, um, wh what is the top three uh, important things to you? And if you have any team members there, I'd love to hear what they're saying. So if you could unmute yourself and uh, share what are the top three. All right. Uh, this is Alyssa. Okay. My top three would be, I guess, 
I hate that I'm saying career first. It makes me feel awful about myself, but uh, my career, my marriage, my family. Okay. So career, marriage, family. Okay. All right, Tabitha, can you share what your top three are? If Tabitha is there. Yes. Top okay. three are. <laughs> Am I unmuted? Yep, there we go. Sorry about that. Um, okay. My uh, top three are family, personal growth and health. Okay, so personal growth, health, family. and what's your third? Uh, family is number one. Oh, family. I'm sorry. I've missed that. Okay. Okay, Rachel, have you done the exercise? Would you like to share? Sure. I am. Um, I put uh, marriage romance at number one, and then um, family number two, and then I kind of combined friends, fun recreation for number three, if that's allowed. <laughs> <laughs> yes, if they're of equal importance, you can definitely do that. Okay, so uh, anybody else? Do you have, I don't know if uh, any of the chamber staff, the rest of them want to share? Miss Sherry, this is Nick. Okay. Um, my number one is health. Number two is family. And number three is career. Okay. Okay. Anybody else? This is funny because I did it and then I'm looking at it now thinking, that's how I feel this very minute. But <laughs> anyway, um, family for one, health for two, and spiritual for three. Okay. Very good. I'm writing these down. So, all right. Anybody else? <coughs> Excuse me. I did spiritual, friends, and then family. Spiritual friends, family. Okay. Well, I think that only leaves Kim. So I have family, I have marriage and romance, but even though I'm not married, I might as well be, and then health. <laughs> That's funny. Even though I'm not married, I might as well be. Okay, very good. And then health. Okay. So I want you to keep those in front of you because these are your priorities. And I'm curious if you guys could tell me, are any of you, do you feel like you're living in your priorities? Yes. Who said that? Me, Kim. Okay. All right. So you're, you're living there. Okay. Mm -hmm. Anybody else feel like they're living in their priorities? Okay. All right. Now. Guys, this may freak you out, what we're gonna do next. But on your worksheets, the next step is I want you to either get your calendar out, use your memory if you need to, and I want you to write down all of your commitments and appointments. Now, this is both regular and non-regular. So, you know, if you have to work and you've got, you know, a regular schedule, you can put work down. If you have kids or family obligations that are, regular or non-regular and by non-regular i mean they're not on your list all the time so for example i have a dinner uh, uh appointment with some friends tomorrow night that would be non-regular so i want you to write down everything that you do all the time every day as far as appointments and commitments family and professional and personal and then you're non-regular and i'm going to give you a few moments to do that anything you can think of i want you to write it down
And if you need to get another piece of paper, go ahead and get it out. I know some of you are probably amazed at how many things you have to do. Okay, and once you're done, just uh, let me know. Okay, list is done. I'll give you a few more moment, moments. Uh, Alyssa, could you put in the chat, is it like an overwhelming list or are you surprised that it's not as much as you thought? Are you done, Rachel? Okay. Okay. Yes, I understand, Alyssa. All right. So we're going to go ahead and go through this next phase. So this is where we're doing the zero based budgeting. You know, it, it's like, I want you to pretend that you have nothing on your calendar and, uh, and you guys can see my screen, right? With the time management. Okay. All right. So I want you to ask yourself the following questions. Now you may not be able to get through each item in our training today, but I would strongly encourage you to continue once we get done. And I want you to ask yourself four questions um, so we can mark through those commitments that are no longer serving you or your goals, which we've already established by numbering them one to 10, right? So we've got your top three. So you need to ask yourself, especially on the regular ones, um, number one, is this essential? So I want you to keep the ones that are essential that you have to do now. Here's another question though, to make sure it is essential. Because for those of you that are um, people focused and based, you may think something's essential that is actually not essential. And when I mean essential, I mean where it's gonna add to or make your top three priorities easier to do. So again, when I was developing my course, having lunch with friends, um, it wasn't essential to me because my career was number one. But for those of you where marriage and family and friends and recreation are a priority, then having those scheduled times of spending time with the people you love, that is essential. So you'll wanna keep that on your list. But the question is, does it add or take away from my current priorities? And then the third question, and it's amazing when people decide 
you need to ask yourself, do I really want to do this? You know, so like with work, sometimes you have to do stuff you don't want to do. We know that. But I was never that mom that was going to drive Kent all over the place to do every single sport, every single practice, et cetera. There's no way in H-E double hockey sticks that was going to be me. So what I did is I delegated it. If he had a friend that was doing something, if he, you know, of course, if he had something important, I would attend. But, you know, like practices, things like that, uh uh-uh, nope. So I sent him with friends or I sent him with family members that were also maybe at those. And it freed my time. So ask yourself, when you look at your list, are there things on there you just don't want to do? So whatever doesn't add to your top three, whatever you don't want to do, I want you to mark through. It's not written in stone, but just mark through them. And then the final question, as you start marking through stuff, are you willing to give up what's really important for you to do that task? And here's what I mean. If I spend $100 on an item, that $100 is gone. So that $100 may have could have gone to something else, but it's too late. It's spent. So it's the same thing with time. If you say yes to a task, you're saying no to another. Okay. So ask yourself, are you willing to give up what's important to you to take your child to every soccer practice there is, or can you find a solution to delegate that? If that's something you enjoy and there's something else interfering with it, can you get rid of it? So I want you to start marking through the things you don't want to do that don't add to your priorities and that you're not willing to exchange time for something else. And here's the thing. If it's not a definite yes, then it's a definite no. Okay, so start marking through them. Don't don't go into panic though. You'll be all right. <laughs> I know Ernie's space. It's okay. Start marking through. We'll get to some of those things. And I'm just going to give you a few seconds because I don't want you to overthink. If it's not a definite yes, I want you to mark through it. And then we'll talk about why maybe you're nervous about that. Okay, so what I want um, to do is each one of you to share one item that you marked through. And if it's making you nervous, for sure share that one. (laughs) If you can't because of sensitivity and you know confidentiality don't worry about that get another one but i want you to tell me number one what you mark through and why and if you're nervous so kim you're the one in there laughing so we're going to start with you (laughs) okay so i wrote down dog appointments all right because i don't have a dog but my parents have a dog and since my dad's been diagnosed with alzheimer you know that was something that they did so i took on the responsibility of taking the dog to the groomers Mm -hmm. but my mom was like you know it's okay I can get your dad out and do that but I feel guilty because I you know him getting out and he starts panicking and stuff like that so it's like okay that should that should be my responsibility okay so that right there where she just said I feel guilty right Mm -hmm. A lot of you are going to find that some of the commitments you've said yes to are because you'll feel guilty if you don't do them or you're afraid people will get mad at you. And so uh, what solution can we have for that? Well, uh, you might hire a trusted teenager to go with your mom. So what we came up with was my dad was okay just driving in the car because it was the same route. Okay. The same route. Because, you know, with Alzheimer's, if you change something, it throws everything up. So I said, Daddy, show me the route you want us to take. So he said, we have to go this way, even though it took 10 minutes when it should have took two. Uh That's the route we take now. So he can go and drop off the dog. Okay. So So. 
here's what I would uh, suggest. Experiment with them taking the dog by themselves, right? Mm -hmm. The one time and debrief with your mom and ask how it went. If okay. not, find someone trusted and delegate that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, Ernie. Okay. Well, I couldn't, I couldn't mark off hardly anything. I figured, yes. <laughs> now, um, so, I mean, this is when you said write down your appointments. Well, I have a little list right here already that I've, where am I? That's got four appointments before 10 for today. Right. And so, um, so a lot of work related with planning upcoming events. So I can't mark those up. That's my job, like you said. Right. Um, so I have regular grandkids. I'm not going to mark them off. Right. Because that's a priority for you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then doctor's appointments, I need to do those. So that's a priority. Yes, yeah, a yep. priority as well. So I did put two things on here that I'd like to do, but I don't do. And so I, <laughs> I put them off so I can have something to mark off. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and then I couldn't take anything off of non-regular. I couldn't take anything off of non-regular. And I, I was just, maybe, maybe I'm too specific on my list, but like I have some friends that are here from Montana today. I'm going to have dinner with them tonight. So that's an appointment that I can't, that I can mock and mark off. And then the last few weeks, we've been moving my daughter to a, a new house in Amarillo. So I couldn't mark that off. I've got to finish my mom's estate. I can't mark that off. I'm going on a um, trip next week and first time to go somewhere. So that I'm looking forward to that. I can't mark that off. And then um, I have um, some stuff that I have to get to Clovis Minnesota schools. And so I've got to get that done today. But so I, can't, I, I mean, that's non-regular things that I have to do. So I do have exercise and, and girls night out on here, but I didn't mark them off. So if, if I marked any off non-regular, it'd be exercise. <laughs> <laughs> exercise, which that actually would contribute to number two. Right. Now, so for those things, Ernie, that you talked about, those are actually things, yeah, I, I agree with you. Um, there, you go through periods of life mm -hmm. where there are things that are imposed on you that you just can't, Mm -hmm. delegate. Okay. Wow. Uh, so what I would do is I would start then looking through your day. I'd do like a time inventory and see if there's any areas where you can capture 15 minutes to go for a walk. Okay. Something like that to go with your priority. Okay. Okay. All right, Rachel, was there anything that you were able to mark off? I was going to say, Ernie's going to be happy to hear that I did the exact same thing, went through the whole list and didn't mark anything off and was like, okay, what can I add here real quick so that I can then mark it off? So, um, because I mean, they all definitely fell into the top three that I gave, but so I, I went back when I, the one that I added, um, well, I'll, hold on, I'll go through the ones that are there first. So I obviously I've worked I have yoga, which I do a lot, and I, I'm not willing to give that any that up. Um, I have FaceTime with family. I have things like taxes and doctor's appointments and things like that that you have to do. Right. Um, then I have family visits, friends coming into town. Uh, we have a whole bunch of weddings and, and things coming up right now. Uh, so the ones that I added were um, like birthday parties for friends and things, because there are obviously those are always happening, and I love going to them but maybe I don't need to go to every single one. So Okay. And that that um that would be a question. So for the birthday parties that are coming up, you know, ask yourself, okay, will this take away from something that's very important to me? If the answer is no, then go. You know right. what I mean? But you may already be closer to living your life by design to where you're already you have a life that is structured around what's important to you, which it sounds like. So I would give the same advice uh, that I gave to Ernie is, okay, beware of those self interrupts, you know, look for those things that distract you, look for those things that if you eliminate them, give you more time for the things you love. But if you're living in your life already by design, you're probably fine. And that's why maybe you did not have you know, some things to mark off, okay? I thought, I actually noticed first before trying to knock things off, that I didn't have anything on there for my marriage. So that was, I needed to, you know, oh. find, that was my number one. So that's your number you know, one. 
Absolutely. I felt like maybe I needed to add something in there. <laughs> I would. I would. So let's say that maybe you have a, an overnight trip every quarter. Maybe you go right. out to eat dinner once uh, a week where the phones are left at home um, or once a month. You know, there are things, you know, maybe you have coffee each day at a certain time and you visit, you know. So I, I would say, Rachel, um, definitely add in something for your marriage. And then if one of those birthday parties come up and they take away from that, that would probably be a definite no to not go to that and spend right. time with your husband. Yeah. Yeah. I have an absolute of coffee every day at five. So, uh, oh, I like that. yeah. Yeah. That's well, what we do. Or a walk on the beach since you live right there by the beach. <laughs> yes. Right. Oh, that's a great and idea. We're, and we're jealous. <laughs> Very good. Yeah. Go for a walk on the beach each night. Like even 15 minutes, it doesn't have to be long. Uh, okay. So Nick, is there anything you can remove on your list? Sorry, Sherry, I was on the phone. Okay, I... don't worry about it. Uh, Chase. So my list, I mean, mostly had to deal with work. Okay. And so I didn't have much on my first one, two, or three. Um, but on that, I think what I see from my list is there's things that I probably could delegate that I tend to just do because it's easier just to do it. Mm -hmm. And but then it takes away all the time to do other things, <laughs> or or you have to stay late at work and you can't get away. So, yeah, I, you might create a separate delegate list, Chase, uh, for D's and C's. So you know, you know that I'm a DC. I know that you're a C personality. Um, we are extremely task focused, and we are also um, of the mind that it actually sometimes takes more effort to pass a task off than it does to just do it real quick. But yeah. all of those little real quick tasks, like you say, do add up and they still time. And so I would definitely, um, purposefully create a delegate list and then decide how and who you want to delegate those things to and go from there because I had to learn that, you know, there's a difference between a shepherd and a rancher and that a shepherd always has to be deeply involved in everything, but a rancher delegates and that's how they become wealthier typically than shepherds. So delegating is definitely an important task for leaders. Yeah. I need to become the, the rancher. And then I would, <laughs> I would also ask myself, Chase, um, what you can add in to accomplish your goals, especially the number one, and, and guys, even if you start with just number one, start there. You know what I mean? So Rachel, you got to get that marriage thing in there, chase your spiritual aspect. Um, now, uh, Alyssa, you had career, of course, is number one, uh, but on your list, what are some things that you just don't, uh, what's one thing you don't want to do or that you know you need to, de to delegate, et cetera? <laughs> <laughs> what I know I need to delegate I I oh my gosh if I could only I'm really not a control freak but there's just nobody here who knows how to do the stuff that I do so I don't know even know who to delegate to everybody here is so stacked up and busy right now with the way that the market is that I I, I don't <sighs> okay so you might be in one of those seasons where that's just what it is you know what yeah. I mean like that's that's what it is. So what about, do you have any personal uh, things that you're, you're doing, but you just don't want to, or it's taken time from your top three? Well, if I'm being honest, I don't do anything personal. Okay. I mean, I, I'm here on Saturday. I'm, I was here till midnight last night and usually here till about 1130 till midnight. I don't, I haven't seen my son all week. <laughs> so two and three are really suffering. Yes. I mean, I, I sometimes get lunch in with my husband and that is my marriage. Okay. Which that that's okay. Um, it can't last forever, um, but that's okay. And okay. like today, there's a funeral I'm supposed to go to for a lady I've known my whole life and I can't go <laughs> and it sucks. Right, right. Well, and you know, you are definitely in the season. The market has been crazy. Uh, I know that from working with Tammy. Uh, 
there is, you know, where it, it will probably slow down and you're, you might be wanting something to do. Uh, <laughs> but for right now, you are in one of those crazy seasons. Plus you've had a lot of staff new hires. Yes. So again, you, you know, you may find yourself where you are stuck, but making that lunch with your husband as a priority can be very important, even if it's three times a week or four times a week, um, where you try your best, you know, to have that time with him where it's focused, the phones are put away, et cetera. That may be all you can do at this moment in your life. So that's okay, guys. Um, sometimes that's where you're at. Tabitha, I'd like to finish off this section with you. What's something that you were able to mark through? Uh, let's see, mine, since my top priorities are family, personal growth, and health, um, some of my regular social media or TV usage is, are things that don't support those goals. So I, um, my plan is to substitute social media usage and TV watching with uh, daily walks and uh, riding bikes um, instead. So try to substitute because I really never thought about it. It's like, oh, that's just my personal time, you know? So I'm just like, oh, I like reading or, you know, whatever I'm doing. And um, I realize that it's not conducive to my goals, you know? Very good. Yes, it's like you, you see that you're doing something that maybe takes like, like that, that's the whole purpose of this, where you see that you're doing something that you may enjoy, but it's not serving you anymore. It's not serving you towards your goals. And so what I would recommend is going a step further and being very specific on at this time, I'm going to put up my phone and I'm going to take a 15 minute walk, or I'm going to take a 20 minute walk or a bike ride. And, uh, and then after that, I want to do this with my family, you know, whatever it is, uh, like for us, uh, we, after coffee, we have, um, maybe a little bit more work we do, but then we have our, we actually enjoy watching TV together. And so on Wednesdays, it's our movie night as a family. And so that's what we do. So that's something that we enjoy as a hobby, but for you guys, if your family is more of that one-on-one, -on -one, let's visit, let's play games. I would definitely assign some times some duration. And even if you don't hit it every day, that's okay. Start with maybe twice a week. And I'd be very curious to find out if you find yourself trying to self-interrupt and get on your phone. So if you could shoot me maybe a, an email by the end of the week, I would love to hear if that's something that you experienced. All right. Yeah, and I Oh, go ahead. I noticed that I do that all the time on the self-interrupting. Um, so that's something I'm going to watch for now that I'm aware of it. Yeah. Treat it like an addiction because that's exactly what it is. And uh, uh, I am a self-interrupter because of that. So I, I literally will put my phone in a whole nother room to where it makes it hard for me to get it. Uh, so, but you know, then you have the Apple watch and that can be a problem. But anyway, um, sometimes I have to put my phone on do not disturb. Now, uh, some of you may experience fear of missing out, you know, and so uh, you don't want to upset others, things like that. So what I recommend for those of you that have really struggled with that, I'm going to give you two steps here. Number one, if you fear missing out or if you fear the wrath of your friends and your family members because you're saying no, okay, I want you to stop the activity and see if there are any negative consequences. So I was shocked. I, I, at a point, lived my life sometimes on the schedule of others. And then I decided, I don't want to do that. I don't, they're not going to ha have an account for my life. I'm going to have an account for my life. I don't want to do that. So I'm just not going to. And so I just started saying no, or, or I just quit going to certain things. It was amazing. It was like, no one missed me. And I'm all, wow. So then it took like a hit to the ego, you know, that, I thought I was important and I actually found out I wasn't that important. <laughs> so it's amazing. And then I also found that I, I didn't miss, I didn't miss out on anything that was important to my priorities. And man, that just freed me so much. So I'm very careful with my yes and I'm very free with my no. 
and I'll do it very tactful, very diplomatic. Um, but if, if I get rid of something and no one notices, then I know that it was not that important for me to be a, a participant in that. And also I have now gained what I want to do. So stop an activity, see if there's any negative consequences from friends and family. And if so, then we can work through that. If you come into that, make sure you call me or something. And then number two, work with other individuals to brainstorm ideas or come up with compromises, you know, that will free your time or greatly reduce your time investment, kind of like what we walked through with Kim. Um, you don't want to do things out of guilt, guys. There's no reason to live life based on guilt. You know what I mean? So for those of you that love people and are people focused, that may be hard for you. For a, a, a psychopath like me, it's not hard at all. <laughs> and then, okay, so with everything that we've done, this is what I want you guys to finish uh, with because I need to get to an appointment. With your number one priority that you wrote down, that's your one thing, right? So I want you to write down a one thing statement where it's basically like, this is my one thing and I commit to tackling it first or whatever it is, making it a priority each day, okay? So if you're struggling with your one thing, like I said, shoot me a text and we'll, we'll get to that. And then I've got some time blocking and some troubleshooting obstacles I added for you guys uh, that you can work through as far as, you know, again, if you have to start your day with emails and phone calls and putting out fires and assigning duties, absolutely do it. But once those things are assigned, I want you to shut your door, put your phone in the drawer, close your email and fa Facebook and set a timer for 25 minutes. And if you have staff members, guys, that interrupt you with needless questions, that they know what to do, they don't need to ask it, but there's been a codependency relationship, you basically need to let them know, unless there is a fire, unless you have cut a finger off, unless, you know, if you cannot figure this out, do not disturb me for 25 minutes. Because people treat you the way you train them to treat you. And sometimes, and I even found that myself doing this, knowing these principles with Miss Gail, I would ask her questions. I knew what to do, but it become a habit when I was learning. So that may be something that can help you. And then, of course, I've got some uh, obstacles that you can go through and, uh, and you know, um, get your strategy. So anyway, I... Uh, I liked this. I do have to go. If you have any questions whatsoever, um, uh, Kim can put my email in the chat, but I think most of you have it. Shoot me an email uh, and uh, let me put my uh, phone in there real quick in the chat. Uh, I love visiting and talking about strategy and things like that. So you just shoot me a text and we'll, we'll strategize for you, okay? So sorry I have to run, but I'll see some of you at noon. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Thank you, Sherry.